In a recent interview, a journalist asked me a series of questions about placenta donation. Now, I don't know how many of my answers will actually make it into the story, but she asked a bunch of good questions, and I thought it would be fun to share it with everybody to give you my more full view of this topic. So let's talk about it. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Dr. David. So for many years, I've counseled families about the various uses of placenta. Now, at Holistic Pediatrics and Family Care, families have made different choices, as we do with a lot of different things, including leaving the placenta at the hospital, the birthing center, or with the midwife, having the placenta encapsulated for oral use afterwards. They will, Some people will consume it, similar to like cooking up liver or even putting it into a smoothie. Some people bury it in a meaningful place, and other people will donate it as an organ. So here's some of the questions that I was asked. So first off, what is a placenta made from? Now, this is tissue that is made by the developing embryo. It's not actually made by the woman. It's not made by the, by the actual uterus. Now, as the embryo is developing, the placenta is where the, where the mother and the, and the, and the fetus is actually exchanging gas where oxygen is being brought to the baby through the umbilical cord, of course. And then, of course, carbon dioxide leaves the system as well. Um, but it also is, is a filter. It protects the baby from toxic that could be in the mother's blood that you don't want to get to the baby. So nature kind of figured out a filtration system as well. Now, what can placenta donate? What can a placenta donation be used for? Now, the placentas, and this is now being used in hospitals, that the placental tissue can be used to treat serious burns and also poorly healing wheels like diabetic ulcers. Now, in our practice, we also have moms will often encapsulate it. They'll, it'll be steamed, dehydrated, and powderized. There are services in the community that do this. Some people have done it for themselves. And they do this because we have had reports of women having improvements in their postpartum depression. Some people take it and claim that it prevents postpartum depression. They take it to replace the iron. It's a very blood-filled organ, and they'll do it to replace the iron, especially because they have blood loss that can happen very frequently during the delivery process itself. And also, some women claim that it helps them with fatigue, probably because of the um, iron, but there's also other hormones in there that could be kind of being replaced as the hormonal shifting goes on as a woman moves from the pregnancy state to the post-pregnancy state. Now, also, stem cells can be used and taken from the placenta itself. So, obviously, there's a potential there for a whole bunch of uh, of research to be done there. Obviously, cord blood is collected for that same reason. And, of course, this is kind of coming from the same place. Now, what happens to a placenta if it isn't donated or used to make pills? And this is really just something, it's just left there. Um, it's left with the, um, with the hospital, et cetera. It's discarded as medical waste as anything else, you know, the, the, um, you know, the, the, the tissues and the napkins and the, and the other types of things, the sponges that are all used to kind of sop up the blood. It kind of just all goes out in one bag. Usually there's like a little, um, when the, when the baby is being delivered and then the placenta comes after, there's usually a garbage can right there next to it with a nice red bag that's obvious for biohazard. And that's where it's typically placed. Now, what conditions or reasons mean that you cannot donate a placenta? Now, the main reason for this would be infection. So obviously, you know, we would know ahead of time if a baby has groupy strep, and that's for certainly that would be in, in the, um, in, that would be in the placenta as well if, if, if it's, if it's, if it's there. Um, but also you can be doing testing for these types of things. Now, I certainly over time, when I, especially when I used to be in delivery rooms during my residency, Sometimes you'll, you'll, there'll be like a funky smell. You know that there's some kind of bacterial infection going on. Other times you may see like more of an older, um, not as healthy looking placenta. It's something that are more likely to happen if a baby is post dates, if they get to like their 41st, 42nd, like sometimes it's not as healthy or a robust situation. But of course, you know, if one can be testing the placenta ahead of time to see if there's an infections, that's the reason, um, that's kind of a way of kind of knowing if that could be a problem or not. Now, another question that was asked is if you donate the placenta after birth, what is the process? Now, there are several different organizations, usually in different communities, that accept the donations. And they're usually the same types of organizations that collect organs for all other types of donations when people are doing kidney donations or people are doing um, liver donations, etc. Things that happen like if a person died and they want to harvest the organs, that's the same type of organizations that are doing this. 
Now, the process can be ch different from one um, location to the other. So, you know, I'll typically suggest to a mother to be that if they do want to donate it, that they should be ch they should um, check with the person who's delivering it. They may actually have some organization within the hospital or know of a particular service that's accepting it. Um, and of course, a person can reach out to that that donating facility as well. Now, I realize that some people will have an ick factor for this. Totally right. Um, one of the things that we know, though, is that a lot of animals, especially wild animals, do eat their placentas after they give birth. One of the guiding factors that I've always looked at when trying to figure out what makes sense, especially from a more holistic perspective, is I ask myself, what do other mammals do? And if we're doing it differently than all of the other species out there, I actually question who's got it right and who doesn't. But certainly, you know, if this is being done out in the wild, if this is being done out in the jungle, in the Sahara, whatever, these animals are doing it. They're doing it safely. It should be fine. But of course, I do point out that the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology does not recommend that this be done. Again, with their concern being about bacterial contamination as the main thing. But as we've talked about everything along the way, it's your health, it's your choice. If it's something that a person wishes to do and they're healthy and there doesn't look to be like any problems, I would support their decision. So thanks for listening. Of course, as always, please, um, if you're not a member of this YouTube channel, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification button so you can get notified whenever we put these things out there. And of course, please join us on our other social media handles as well as join our Patreon where you can get up-to-date information as well as our protocols that are normally reserved for our patients. Have a great day. If you like what you have heard, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.